Sierra or in Tucson, Tucson or at the uh, Pima, Pima, something, Pima Air and Space Museum. Uh, we're about to take the, uh, uh, the bus trip through the uh, boneyard at the uh, Air Force Base just across the street here. Uh, the bus is uh, behind us right now. Uh, we're on the uh, 1031 and uh, the wife and I are going to see if uh, what it looks like in there. Hopefully we can get some good shots. Uh, kind of restricted out here. Uh, you can't take your camera bag or anything like that with you. So I've got my little camera out here, which I can just fit in my pocket. And uh, you'll see the bus actually right behind us out here, behind this, whatever this one is. This is a Douglas A4C. Uh, I just happen to know that because it's on the sign. So I just come on along with us and uh, we'll get on the bus and uh, we got the 1031. And uh, uh, they get about four or five of them. So, uh, and they take about an hour and 15 minutes. It's a beautiful sunny day. It's going to be high of about 25 degrees centigrade out here. And uh, so uh, come along with us. So there's the uh, bus that will be taking us, Mountain View. And there's the entrance to the uh, Pima Air and Space Museum. And uh, we've already got our tickets, so when we come back, we'll just be able to jump right uh, into the uh, Air and Space Museum. It's a massive place, but uh, I want to see these. There's about 4,000 airplanes uh, that are in uh, mothballs uh, where we're uh, heading off to. So uh, hang on, folks. Uh, here we go. Service, so you can tell how old these aircraft are. 
Now these are all C's. The D-Mod, which is a two-seater and trainer version, has been moved off the line. We have a C-130s on the right side of the bus right now. Our different units are very old models. Now the C-130 started off uh, in manufacture in 1954. First started flying in 55. Basic style hasn't changed a bit. And since they've been developed, all they've done is upgrade the engine. They're taking all the precious metal out of, and they're going to turn around, and then they're going to melt them down. So that soda pop that you had earlier today may have been a jet engine at one time. And that frying pan that you used the other day may be a jet engine also, or an airplane even. Now, uh, that's, yeah, that, that's the biggest group of aircraft, C-130s, KC-135s, and that's followed by F-16s. Now, some of these jet engines are too big to be put in containers like these here, and these have come off the Galaxy, the C-5. Yeah. Uh, now, they can't yeah. put them in those containers, so they take the oil out, spray a lightweight oil on them, and put that spray lamp on them to protect them. Okay, we're going to take a uh, left turn down here, and we're going to go start down Celebrity Row if my bus driver doesn't go like that. I wasn't going to say that. Okay. <laughs> What's the, what no, you're here? not. Anyhow, this is the right on the left on? side right oh, now is okay. this is the spray I'm on yeah. okay, This is an observation over. aircraft. If you take a look at that canopy on that aircraft, it looks right. like a plane okay. that is like the way it's bubbled out on each side. This gives the observer as well as the pilot the ability to look straight down and not have a few slides interrupt their view. Now, during Vietnam, they took, the Army took several of these aircraft, and what they did is put specialized equipment on there. They put two of them in the air, and then they could triangulate where the North Vietnamese or Viet Cong were uh, transmitting their radios from and call in for a bomber strike. It's a tracker. Now, a tracker is, a, is the aircraft they were using before they used the S-3. Normally, it has a light on the left wing as you're facing it, 70 million candlelight light. Now, why do they need such a bright light? Submarines come up in the darkest part of the night to recharge the batteries that they run when they're under the ocean. The little one there, the very small one right there, it does have a sign in front of it. It has, normally has a ball like taken off the top of the rotor on that. What they do with this aircraft, they hide it behind the hill, put that ball up over the top of the uh, ridge line, and then they can see both visually and uh, with heat signatures what's over on the other side, and then they can direct the uh, gunships into the, the fight when they needed them. Right next to the H of uh, Kiowa is an H3 Sea King. Now, the Sea King is the same type of aircraft that you see fly off the White House every now and then. Their, their uh, Marine One is an H3. This aircraft is uh, used for uh, submarine hunting, as well as moving people and cargo from one place. Right now is the E-2 Hawkeye. That big dish you see on top is uh, a radar dish. Some of these were flying out of a base just south of uh, San Jose, and some <coughs> gentleman had, had too many martinis at martinis at lunch, and uh, this took off over the freeway, and he called it in and said, a UFO is stealing one of our aircraft. <laughs> this aircraft is, flies off of an aircraft carrier, two to seven hundred miles in front of it, extends the horizon for the aircraft carrier. They can see any ships or any aircraft coming at them before they get to be a threat. Okay, on the left side right now is an ES-3. This is based off the S-3 airframe, the same thing we saw earlier, but this is an electronic jamming aircraft. You notice it has a bunch of bubbles on top and on, on the bottom of that, plus many more antennas, so it goes out and it can jam radios and radars for the Navy while the uh, fleet's moving around. Right next to it is a TA-4J. Now it's painted it's sort of different than most uh, aircraft in the Air Force. You notice it has a big red star on the tail because it was part of the aggressor squadron. And the aggressor squadron uh, flew the same tactical missions that the Russians flew, and that uh, A-4 then does a lot of the same maneuvers, and it's a very maneuverable aircraft, so it corresponds to a lot of the Russian aircraft. So they would use uh, this to go against our fighters and teach them how to fight against the Russian fighters. 
Right next to it is the first exposure. A uh, Navy pilot will get to an aircraft when he's ready to fly the T-34C. The turbo venture has been replaced by the gut chuck. Uh, all the T-34s you'll see are in here. But this is the first exposure to a, uh, an aircraft. It's a turboprop. A turboprop is nothing more than a jet engine that turns a propeller. The aircraft on the right side right now is a YC-14. The YC-14 uh, we was an experimental aircraft close to the end of the Vietnam War. The Air Force wanted an, an aircraft that could take off on short landing, uh, short runways, like a uh, 2,000 foot runway with 28,000 pounds of cargo. And this aircraft could do it, did do it. And Boeing put the engines on top like that because the exhaust helped with the lift. And those great big bubbles underneath are hinges that allow the flaps to come down and give you about three times the flat, the uh, wing area, so that you could have a slow takeoff and a slow landing. Now, if you notice the canopy in the back of that aircraft is higher in the back than it is in the front. That allows the instructor pilot to look over the student shoulders as coming in for landings on an aircraft carrier. Because they do, they, that's where they first start learning to land on an aircraft carrier. T2 Buckeye is made in uh, Columbus, Ohio, and the name of the Buckeye. Next aircraft on the left side is an EA 6. It's called a Prower. Now the Air Force had an EF-111, which is an uh, electronic aircraft. When they brought the F-111s out of service, this type of aircraft is used by all branches of service. Your crew on that may be an Air Force, it could Air Force Marines and Navy crew could be on there. It could be all Navy crew, it could be all Air Force crew. They use the Prowler also as a, a uh, aircraft to go out and jam radios and uh, radars as they brought the bombers in on bombing runs. Now, the right seat of that, or the left seat that you're facing it, uh, that uh, EA-6, is where the bombardier sits. It's very difficult to train those. So the next aircraft, the TC-4C, can train four to six at a time, a lot better than uh, A-6, where you can only train one at a time. If you notice, the nose on that aircraft looks just like the nose on that EA-6. <coughs> really. The question was, what's a big pipe coming out of the front of that? That is a refueling probe. Uh, they have a hose on the end of it with a big basket that uh, looks like a shuttlecock. Then they fly that along when they faltered a couple times, have made their landings on the aircraft carriers, so that allows them to go in hit that basket and get refueled. That's the way the Navy does their in-flight refueling. Now, the Buddha was used mainly as an Air Defense Command. What the Air Defense Command did is they would fly along the coastlines and the borders of the United States, and any time there was an aircraft that was unidentified flying into our airspace, they would send one of these up and either convince them to turn around or identify who they were. Okay, coming up on the left side is an F-18, it's a Hornet. This is the air, uh, air demonstration team of the Navy. It's the Blue Angels. Now, the uh, Blue Angels now are using the Super Hornet, which is a little bit heavier, a little bit shorter, and a lot uh, has more of a beat to their tail. But number seven was used primarily to take uh, senior officers or bears or even news media up, and then they let them fly around. And that's what that aircraft is. That's number seven. Right next to it, you see flying around here quite often is an A-10. That aircraft was built around the seven-barrel Gatling gun. That uh, Gatling gun will shoot a two, two to two and a half pound uranium depleted shell and will take out the tail fire 69 rounds in a second and can take out most armor. Now, the whole thing, the whole uh, gun on that aircraft is the size of a Volkswagen and a whole bunch of new classified information inside. As well as a mag unit, that little stinger on the back is a mag unit, magnetic anomaly detector on that. Aircraft coming up on the uh, left side of the aircraft right now is an MP3. This aircraft, anytime that there was a missile launch, you know, 
Here we go. If you look off to the left, you'll see looks like a F-16 and a P-51. P-47. P-47. Uh, I'm going to try and just overlook the airplane there. The aircraft coming up on the left side is a C-20. It's a Gulf Steam 3. It's used by the uh, communications agency to any time the president was moving that moved a lot of his uh, communications equipment with him. Uh, they upgraded the aircraft from the G3, the Gulfstream 3, to the, the G4 and the G5. Here's the aircraft. There's the next one coming up on the left side. It's a T-37 Tweet. Also, nickname the dog whistle because it has such a high-pitched whistle to it. Student and instructor sit side by side in that aircraft. That aircraft was in service until about four years ago, and then they've taken it out. It's replaced the T-37 with the Texan II. It's a turboprop aircraft. Once they had the jet aircraft figured out how to fly, when I was in the service, the next aircraft they went into was the T-38, which is the next one on the left side. T-38 is painted black because it was flown by uh, up at the DR. Um, the missile you see on the ground is a sounding missile used at white sand missile range for their uh, ground launch, their, their ground launch missiles. It's called a, uh, oh, I lost it, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's an Athena, thank you. It's called the Athena. Okay, these aircraft you see coming closest to us are C-23s, they're called called Chirpus. They're used by the Army for uh, moving troops around as well as some of the special forces use those aircraft. They are getting an upgraded version of the Chirpus and they're going to be C-47 and uh, they look very similar to that. I don't know what the difference is. If you look on down further, you'll see some C-27s down there. Got some, uh, some uh, S-3s sitting real close here. KC-135 sitting on the other side, on the left side of the bus right now. That great big pipe with the wings coming out of the back of it is actually the boom. It's a boom operator will fly down and actually in contact with the other aircraft and offload fuel. Over 700 of these aircraft were made between 1955 and 1963. So you can tell they're an old aircraft. This gray and white one here, C-25. C-135 is uh, used in the Black Crow mission. That was the uh, airborne, airborne laser mission. You notice all these helicopters don't have rotors on them. The rotors are very susceptible to sunlight and weather. And what they do now is they take them off and put them in a humidity controlled building to protect them. And then uh, a lot of the Forest Service is picking a lot of those helicopters back up and using them for uh, water, for uh, forest fires and carrying water. Maintenance area is all on the right side right now. This is little Quonset Hut, so put some of the uh, electronic equipment in out of some of these aircraft. It's not susceptible really bad to the heat. They do have those in air condition. You've got some uh, Blackhawks sitting there for maintenance. Or it's completely demoralized and goes to some place like an American Legion or a BMW or some place like that. As you can see right here, it's going to be a cold day in the hot spot before some of these play ever fly again. If you look on the ground there, you see a boom fully extended. Some uh, T-34 is sitting in the second row out there. Some uh, S-3 sitting here. F-16s, old F-16s when they're brought in, are thrown in here. That's how they do that a lot of times. And they put them on a C-5. You got some uh, C-Corbers sitting here. Now, you can always tell a presidential aircraft painted from a regular VIP painted aircraft. They all are painted similar to that, but the presidential aircraft has a blue area that comes across the top of the canopy. Yeah, that's it. It's P-38 and F-16. P-38 two boom, two boom. It's a P-40. That's not a P-51. That's a P-40. P-40. Oh yeah, they're, they're, they're idling and they, they have the ones going for a while. Okay, uh, February.